The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow, and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Our Lord states in Jeremiah 10.10, 10, quote, But the Lord is the true God. He is a living God and an everlasting King. At His wrath, the earth shall tremble and the nations shall not be able to abide His indignation. This great verse of all time remembers us to realize and to proclaim fearlessly the things and the righteousness pertaining to Jehovah. Our great Yahweh, who has designed each and everything in eternity past, who has given us this ability to hear His word and to preach His word and to represent the truth in righteousness, makes us to realize, irrespective of the various schemes, plans over north, south, east, west, in this arid wilderness by the great fallen angel known as Satan, we need not worry over the tactics or strategies or at various schemes and plans and methods to be deceived. But rather we the believers need to be cautious enough. The hedge which has been put for our fortification in the in the word of the Lord in the boundary of Bible doctrine, when you are walking to the Lord God Almighty words, the wrath nor his indignation will be bestowed upon us. The same volition issue which was common with the chief fallen angel known as Satan, the same volition issue is between now for each and every believer and unbeliever. Believer towards Bible doctrine, unbeliever towards our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our Lord is patient and gracious enough not to judge us as the things they are pertaining to Him, but rather our Lord has been so much gracious in this church age, we need to be particularly concerned much what is happening exactly, where are we, why have we been made still kept alive, why are we still going around and looking around, the things that are happening to be testified as the great Aleke Niketesis, new spiritual spaces in Christ. There are many a people, the church has come up with a privilege as hypocritical manners. Over the carnivals of the late night of Saturdays, this man, they want to have a lust over the half-naked girls. And Sunday morning coming and sitting in the pew, With their wives and children, they want to confess to the God the sin they have committed. And they want to be free of their guilt conscious again. Again, the same next Saturday, they want to be appearing in the carnivals. And when an unbeliever in my country like India, or in any part of the world as well, when he looks upon Christianity as this aspect of view, he will definitely call, we are the agents of Satan. We are the members who do not regard truth at all in our lives. 
we the Christians are just like any other religion. The same religion which Satan started. Starting with human sacrifice. To such kind of a great extension to indulge them with unlimited sex. With various multiple partners. Unlimited power and wine. The same indulgence which was happening in each and every religion. The same sect is following around in Christianity as well. The sole reason why we are not able to realize that the earth is Jehovah's. He is a God of true living one. The same reason why we are not able to look upon and understand the truth more clearly, more evidently, more accurately. Is that we the believers of this church age have not been oriented for our new spiritual species. Which is termed out as Alekenekitesis in the Greek. In fact, even the men who are into the Christendom today, who call their assembling into a church, if we could just search out with the inner nature of their thoughts, even they also want to lust around. But they simply want to wind up in the church to tell, we are the believers of Christ. Outside the church, when they go, we can see the true colors, true nature, true attitude, true integrity. And that true attitude and true integrity, what they are having, gives a bad mark, great scar upon this Christendom. We are not even able to maintain our status as other human beings who are unbelievers who are morally superior, who are morally great than us. Far less we are able to maintain the great status of Alekenekitesis, new spiritual species in Christ. And that is what it is happening today in today's pulpits. The only reason why it is happening, men love to stay in darkness rather than in the light. Men love to stay as a hypocritical false nature one rather than staying in the truth. Men love more satanic viewpoint of thinking, the worldliness, the attitude, the hocus pocus attitude rather than one straight responsibility laid down upon the shoulders of each and every believer to be a great ambassador and witness for Christ by looking upon the word of the Lord and growing upon in Bible doctrine. The trends that are happening today in today's Christendom will really make us to realize what we are. The great rituals are the themes of Satan's. The power for the rituals is nothing but the emotion behind them which drives them. And Satan wants to taste them for their emotion. It rises many rituals. Christianity is not a ritual period of emotionalism. The only great ritual what we have, the Lord's Supper. And today they have made rituals without reality and they have made it meaningless. Whenever we come to the Lord's table, the only ritual what we have been given in this church age. We need to be occupied with Christ. Whenever you truly love a man or a girl or a boy, you are occupied with her or with him. And you think about him, you think about them. But when we come to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we cannot love our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ until and unless it is thinking, 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 not emotion. So this great ritual which has been given for us should be occupied with the knowledge of Christ. With his doctrine, with his mindset. If we are not in this mindset, if we are not in this thinking, if we are not able to look upon more eminently, more clearly more understandingly and be occupied with the mind of Christ, our ritual will also become an emotional guilt. 
But our Lord is very clear in his terms. Many who are weak, sick, and dead among you, without having a proper grace, without having a proper confession of their sins, through 1 John 1, 9, and then in 1 Corinthians 11, 30, to judge themselves. Many of the people have been led astray in Christianity today. They have incurred judgment of the Lord upon them. The only sole reason why they have incurred the judgment upon them is that they have lost the true focus, the true worship order, the true SOP that not only recomes or recalls for you in the rituals of our Lord's Supper, but that applies to each and every facet of the soul when we come to worship our Lord. In approaching our Lord, in giving great glory to our Lord. But we are no way interested to give great glory to our Lord, dear brethren. We are only interested to appear weekly once in the church, as if Lord is waiting for your offering, as if you have been told by your minister that your penance or your guilt conscience could be cleared when you pay them the money. After that, when you have been paid and you have been cleared from your money, you will be looking happy. And then you continue with your same work from Monday to Saturday and then indulge into this world. Sometimes I think, why our Lord has bestowed this great grace upon the sinful mankind? The sinful mankind who are not able to realize what is the great value of him that he has been kept alive in this earth. What is the great purpose of him that he has been made and given this alekene ketesus with the indwelling trinity in him? Why they are not able to understand it is not emotion, it is only the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in the churches which has to be ruled. And then do you know what? At present apostate period, Satan will be the best friend of the church the church has ever known. And you may ask me, what is Satan? False thinking, false teaching, false practices. Though we have the completed canon of scripture in our hands, the so-called ministers who are occupying the pulpits have been started to use the defunct spiritual gifts into force. This defunct spiritual gifts which are no way concerned after the post-canon period. And if it is not so, who is working through them? Do you think Satan is working with the same spiritual gifts as our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ used to build up his church? What do you mean to say by the speak, gift, speaking in tongues? It was a language. It had some philology over it. It was able to teach us so that the hearers can understand what they were teaching in their own terms. But today, if you could go and ask for anyone what is a the language they are speaking around when they speak around in tongues, it is an utterish, ecstatic, gibberish language in their tongues. And they call this is godly language. No, that is satanic. That is angastromuthos demon controlling their vocal cords. Here one guy shouts, in other part of the world one more guy shouts. And the one who was shouting, his son woke up at around night 12 o'clock. It seems he's a prophet. By name, he thinks he's a prophet. His name is Mr. Andrew. And then he wants to tell, after he woke up, he got asleep, and he was looking so many angels coming to his home. And he was telling there were around 200 angels, as if he counted those angels. And he asked God, it seems, God, why are you sending so many angels over here? What is this happening here around? So God told for him, it seems, the first 200 people who are going to appear for your meeting there, each and every angel has their requirement, and their requirement will be done. And this guy woke up and he sends in the Facebook a book, a, a, a social network with a comment or with a post. Last night, I was speaking in the tongues. My son asked me, what is that you're speaking? And then when I woke up in my dream, I realized 200 angels coming and going into my home. 
and these 200 angels are the first 200 people who come to this meeting in that school grounds will be receiving their healing or the first 200 people who type amen in this comment will be receiving such and such shame on their part when such kind of a default, defunct spiritual gifts, which are not at all in force, when they are want to lust over the physical lust pattern to be fulfilled in their life, including their diet, social lust, sexual lust, approbation lust, power lust, why will they not blaspheme my Lord with such kind of a useful, useless thoughts? which are useful only for Satan, but never useful for the Lord. And why it is happening? The only reason why it is happening, no proper enlightenment into the word of the Lord, dear brethren. No proper truth to be communicated, dear brethren. No proper understanding of the word of the Lord, dear brethren. And since the hearers are also looking for temporary solutions, and uh, emotional based worship services and hearers are also happy to pay the guilt by paying money as if Lord is asking them or they have been bribing the Lord with their money they just want to walk out in the church stay for two hours and never show back till the next week and as long as these people they continue this trend The wrath and the indignation of Jehovah, as told in Jeremiah 10.10, 10, is being constantly made manifested in each and every part of the earth. The fourth cycle of discipline which my country India is suffering, it is not a client nation, it may not enter into the fifth cycle because Lord has not chosen it to be a client nation. Our Lord may use it in the future when the, we could form a pivot, a pivot of mature believers who could change the course of direction of the history to change the course of direction of history we need to align ourselves, tune ourselves into the terms and conditions of Jehovah and his word which is his mind, which is Bible doctrine not as per our own mind, our own thoughts think around but the mindset which Jehovah demands in us to be stopped And we knew very well, as long as you, the believer, have indifference and apathy towards Bible doctrine, as Isaiah also pointed it out. And the same fate continues till date in today's pulpits as well. Believers are indifference towards doctrine in each and every generation. When there is no proper revolution there, the people will perish. There is no other great curse in the nation where there is no proper revolution of the word of the Lord to them. It is not a curse of economical disaster which is in return not obeying Jehovah or his word or staying in the terms and conditions of Lord God Almighty. The great curse to the nation is the nation where it doesn't have proper pastor teachers to feed you with knowledge and with understanding. That's the ultimate curse for that nation. It is not with a good leadership, not political environment, not manpower, or not the technological power that really builds up the nation, or it is a blessed nation. No. A nation is a blessed nation when there are enough pivot, when there are enough pastor teachers who communicates to you the truth. The truth as it exists in the Bible, not with the denominational heads they are following today. In fact, even today that Martin Luther, Zwingli or Calvin could come together and look along with their head known as Erasmus, they would be shocked to see the way the denominations have been risen in today's Christendom. Why the denominations? Up to the best of your knowledge, what you can understand, that you can understand. The other person, what he can understand, that he has taken it and he has formed a group. The third person, he has formed it a group. The fourth person has also formed a group. Why? Do you not know right from the beginning? As told in Deuteronomy 29:29, 29, 29, the things belong to Jehovah, and he has given them for us in this earth. How? 
through the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. The same thing which our Lord told for us while he was supposed to leave this earth in John chapter 16, verses 12 through following. No, you are still dull of hearing. I have many things to tell to you, but you cannot comprehend them right now. So what is the ultima I need to do for you? I will go and send you the helper, the guide, the truth, who shall lead you into all the truth. He shall explain you, and he shall remind you of the things what I am preaching to you. And when he came, what is the thing that are happening around now? We, the believers, are out of fellowship, not in fellowship with him. How much we are out of fellowship? We are even lying to Lord God, the Holy Spirit. The lying nature. A wrong motivation, but able, but thinking that they are capable of doing good work. Grieving Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Squelching Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And when these things are happening around in today's pulpits, dear brethren, can't you understand what it is? And how you can understand the spiritual phenomena? Bible doctrine demands that we need to be under the controlling power of the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, so that when He is controlling us, He will lead us and guide us into all the truth. That's as simple as that. When He is not controlling us, where is the truth? How are the things that are happening around to be understood? That's why you have so many denominations. Not only denominations, even the cults. The chief trick of Satan is to drive you through emotion. And in today's Christendom, 99.9% .9 of the believers who are coming around, they are coming around only for the sake of emotion to the church. The Pentecostal crowd is great. They are working around 90% of the Christendom population today. What is driving them? Their emotional ecstasy. And that's how Satan uses its chief trick to control you, to divert your mind, to look upon those things which are no way necessary for us in the word of the Lord to be concentrated upon. And that is what it is happening today in today's pulpits, dear brethren. Men are loving darkness. Men are loving emotion. Christianity does not include emotion. It is thinking, thinking, thinking. It is thinking Bible doctrine. No emotion. It is thinking. And when there is no thinking of Bible doctrine in their souls, eventually they will give birth to emotion. No, you're not. Emotion puffs off. Knowledge will hold. Thinking will stand. Attitude will stay. And as long as you still support for your emotion, never you will realize the wrath and the indignation of Jehovah that is coming upon you. Of course, we have been designed to face that at the judgment seat of Christ at the Bema. What you sow that you reap. If you sow to the wood and stubble, you will reap burning. Not yourself burning, but your rewards, but your lifetime, what you worked, will be burnt out. But when you come back and look, when you purchase the time because you have the capital of indwelling Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and put back the time towards the Lord God's word, what do you do there? You yield gold, silver, and precious stones. And this gold, silver, and precious stones is what, dear brethren, you and I have been mandated to look upon Christ. You and I have been mandated to be out of the wrath and indignation of Jehovah. By obeying Him, by following His method, by looking upon His word more evidently, more clearly than anything else in this earth can recognize. And if you still love to stay in the darkness, and if you still love to work upon the emotional-based worship services, Lord, help you at the judgment seat of Christ. But we are staying in the great time, great period. Never in the past nor in the future, this time will repeat again. 
This is only we, the church age. This is only we, the Alekhaine Ketesos, new spiritual species in Lord. And it is only we that we need to look upon the truth. More evidently, from the original languages of the scriptures, and magnifying the grace of our Lord to the praise of His glory in His grace. And if you are not able to do that and perform it in this church age, never you will perform it in any other age, even in the rule of millennium when you come back to rule with Jehovah on this earth. Today is the day for you to look back. Today is the time for you to stay truth. Today is the time for you to look upon integrity and call upon the Lord in truth. And today is the day for you to look upon those standard principles which my Jehovah has mentioned for us. Those great standard principles which he recognizes as SOP, Operating Procedure Standard, which he recognizes through rebound and getting back into fellowship with the Lord. And if you all are not able to understand the simple dogmatical truth, never an unbeliever like Zakir Naik or Sheikh Hamad Didad or Wali Farad or the concepts of ancient aliens which have been looking around or the people who want to summarize the things as they think it is best for them with the human viewpoint will rage. But we have been given this infallible and inherent word. This great infallible and inherent word is the only criteria which really changes the entire course of history, not only now, even in the past, or in fact even in the future as well. Bible doctrine alone, the pivot alone can save this nation. And the nation where there are good exegetors, isogators, and categorized study of the word of the Lord and the concept of dispensation that nation is really a blessed nation and that there are not enough pastor teachers in that nation that nation is a cursed one so which way you want to go dear brethren you want to follow your emotion that is left to you and if you want to look upon the word of the Lord more evidently that is also left to you but the day will come when we all are answerable unto Christ, the things that we are performing in the energy of our flesh and in the energy of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. That day we need to wait and see. Because the wrath and indignation of Jehovah, though so much grace has been bestowed upon us, was it been faithfully used to the praise of His glory? Or was it just left reluctant not to know the truth, not to be able to understand the truth. So which way you go, you decide. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing movements of the sermon are given to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. The one who is listening to this tape, if they want to really look upon the word of the Lord, first they should believe upon Christ. No doubt, Zakir Nayak, what debate he has, we know he is spiritually dead. Any unbeliever, any unbeliever, in fact, when he could come to look and to understand, they are spiritually dead. Until and unless they believe upon the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are not spiritually alive. So the great truth for us, to the unbelievers to be proclaimed by doing the work of an evangelist, is to give them the privacy of their soul their own decision to believe upon the Lord when we could give them the information that believing upon the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ they shall be saved and if they are not interested to look upon that gospel message what we have been telling to them Lord help it the procedure is very simple in the privacy of your soul inaudibly you tell to Lord God the Father that you believe upon his son Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who died for you and for me as a substitute of spiritual death upon the cross of Calvary and just believing upon that simple point, simple dogmatical truth. The word of the Lord is always simple. It's so much powerful, no one can understand it. Except under the controlling power of ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to understand it. Just a simple act of faith. Believing in Christ, you shall be saved. 
for a pastor, for a believer, it is very simple to grow in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Because when we are being under the controlling power of ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, Lord God, the Holy Spirit drives us to lead or to learn the word of the Lord in Bible doctrine, to search the scriptures diligently. And the last duty for a pastor teacher is to preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season, so that the word that he is communicating is required much more evidently clear. Not only the hearers, even the angelic creation will be waiting to look what the pastor is trying to teach from the pulpit. Because it is the word of the Lord alone which can transform your life, not emotion, not any other thing. And Satan knew very well. If the word has been introduced where they could meet Satan face to face, then all its plans, tactics, strategies will be easily erased out. That's why the best what Satan wants to do is to keep away as much far as it can from the word of the Lord and guide them into useless and worthless things as it, it seems fit. But we have this inherent power indwelling in us. And when we are adherent to this inherent power by using rebound, not any gimmicks, penance, tights, but by a simple act of faith, we know very well that is the moment itself. We, the believers of this church age, can be controlled under the controlling power of the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And when we are right and upright to have a true fellowship with Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we can preach the word more clearly, more evidently, and look upon His grace, and not to be worried for any other things in this earth. So it is not emotion, it is a thinking in Christ what we have. And if you are not able to understand the simple dogmatical truth, Lord help you at the judgment seat of Christ. So which way you want to go, you decide in the next step, we shall continue our discourse. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that thou hast given to our fellowship with you through thy word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit will enlighten us in these things. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.